All right, we changed things up a little bit coming in here at episode six because we're about to go on our first mission, and since the uh, next mission will mainly focus on our team, what I've done here is put together a different team just for this one mission that includes some people uh, that are kind of neat and we probably won't see much of in the rest of the story. So in the lead, you can see I've got Deadpool running point. Um, behind him, I have Iceman uh, for projectile attacks, as you guys have seen how I, how I like those. Uh, it looks like we missed a uh, upgrade down here. And then we have Colossus for a little bit of uh, power, and then we had the Invisible Woman, uh, who's got all sorts of neat little abilities. Of course, she's in her ultimate garb, so she she would look a little younger than she would uh, in her classic garb. All right, so just to look around, see our our team real quick before we go jumping into the mission. Ms. Marvel. We're just going to the mall this time, right? Now, the reason I subbed in Ms. Marvel here is purely to pick up that um, upgrade before I forget about it. Yes. But it'll also allow us to show off um, what happens when you select the team that we had originally. Um, in the character for uh, selector. So we're going to run around and look for that uh, power up again. There it is down there. And so we just need to jump up on that table or not. There we go. That's the last striking upgrade, the last upgrade um, that we need from this level. And so now we can go back and kick Miss Marvel out and get our team back that we had uh, a second ago. So here we go. So Miss Marvel out. Invisible woman back in, and you can see that this gets a huge team bonus because for some reason the Ravensoft people uh, really like these characters. Because otherwise, I can't figure out what the common thread between them is. But it does mean that we get to use Deadpool and Colossus in the same team. So if you saw the Deadpool movie, um, those guys will be hanging out together. In fact, uh, really, the Invisible Woman is the one who seems like she's a little out of place with this group, since everybody else is more or less X-Men universe uh, kind of guys. In fact, you could use Deadpool, and I think you could use Iceman and Colossus in the, uh, in the previous game in this series that Ravensoft made, the, uh, I think the X-Men Legends friend, uh, sequel. Okay, there aren't any items for me to, to give to anybody right at the moment, so that's too bad. We're going to leave Deadpool in his classic outfit. Uh, of course, we haven't really unlocked any more outfits. Uh, Colossus's classic outfit is available. But we're going to keep him in this one because it's closer to what he was looked like in the Deadpool movie. Uh, and now, in case you didn't know, I'm going to talk to Wyatt, here at our Native Town. American friend. Sure. What do you need? Discreetly. As in, Colonel don't Fury. let Fury know? Red yeah, I can do that. Give me a little bit. I think I know just the person to ask. Morning. There's a hacker. He's kind of an oddball, but I think he's up to the challenge. If you don't mind me asking, Whose laptop is this? So, you think Natasha's up to something, eh? Maybe working for the other team. It's 
Stark needed a pilot, and he knows I've flown for the Fantastic Four. So I guess he figured I had the skills. I was roommates with Johnny Storm back in college. He introduced me to the group, and after a while, they started inviting me on missions. It's a high-tech jet developed by Stark's company. It's usually used by the Avengers. It's undetectable to radar, can take off and land itself. Heck, it'll even dial the phone for you. Plus, it's got the latest in jet engine technology. This thing will get you around the world in no time. Alright, so... There's no special dialogue there, zone, even though... So be brief. Dum oh, Dum Dugan recently sent a suspicious radio message requesting I meet him at the Omega base for a report on the latest super soldier serum. What's so suspicious about that? Dr. Banner was to give the report. The only thing is, Banner has been working on the Gamma Bomb project, not the super soldier serum. Dugan would never make a mistake like that. Something's up. What is the Omega base? It's a mobile lab that's over five stories tall. We we'll use it for field testing experiments. Oh, S.H.I.E.L.D.'s the greatest. Flying aircraft carriers, office buildings on wheels. Oh, please tell me you've got a tunnel that runs from New York to Tokyo. Spider-Man, this is serious. Colonel, is there anything on board the Omega that would be considered dangerous? If the contents of that vehicle were to fall into the wrong hands, it would be disastrous for all mankind. Exactly what are you developing that could threaten the entire planet? That's classified. So it's all right for us to save the vehicle. We just can't know what's going on there. Correct. Now, if I may continue, the team's mission will be to sneak on board the Omega and locate Dugan. He should be able to bring you up to speed on the situation. Any questions? All right, good luck. Okay, so that was our mission briefing there. Um, again, I was kind of curious whether or not Deadpool Good. One thing I want to point out, you now have a shield port. It's an experimental device that'll let you transport instantly back to headquarters whenever you want. Okay. Good luck in there. Let me know when you want to leave. Quiet out. Team, satellite recon shows the Omega base is now on a collision course with Bondrak Dam. Thousands of lives are now in danger. You must stop the Omega at all costs. Fury out. Um, the Deadpool would have some conversation about the hacker because when you meet the hacker, Deadpool is apparently the character that he knows the best uh, out of the crew. So here we go. I'm just trying to get used to Deadpool's abilities here since he's more of a brawling character, although he does have his guns. And of course, the nice thing about Deadpool Good. They said is the healing factor. I was afraid I'd been a little too clever with my message to the Colonel. Someone used the base's ventilation system to spread a knockout gas. When I woke up, Dr. Doom demanded I bring Colonel Fury here. If I refused, he was going to ram the Omega into the Bondrak Dam. Well, there's no time to waste. Get me to the engineering control room. From there, I'll override navigation and stop this monstrosity. All right, so now we're doing uh, an escort mission here with uh, Dum Dum Dugan. Since we're on the lowest difficulty level, and, and now I'm better at doing whatever it is. Uh, Dugan's not in much danger from these AIM troopers. So yes, our first group of uh, villains here is, are from AIM. Uh, the guys who were theoretically in Iron Man 3, but this is their more classic comic book design with their yellow bio suits that seem to be worn by everybody. And uh, this is Deadpool. Deadpool is, although we haven't really gotten an opportunity to hear his voice, uh, Deadpool is voiced by John Cassiers. Uh, like he was in the X-Men uh, Legends uh, 2 game. Uh, Kassiers will also come back and voice Deadpool for the second Marvel Ultimate Alliance game. And then he will uh, make another cameo appearance 
in a Deadpool-related role in Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. Uh, Kassirs will voice the Deadpool fanboys that serve as Deadpool's minions uh, in the Ultimate Spider-Man level where Deadpool's involved. Now we're running into a new uh, villain type here, the Super Soldier. We're going to run into several of those. Unfortunately, S.H.I.E.L.D. is one of the groups trying to recreate the uh, same stuff that made Captain America so good in the first place. And just like everybody else, they don't seem to be doing quite so well with it. So we'll be running into essentially what amount to a bunch of failed experiments. Now again, this is going to be comic book aim villains, so you're not going to run into Aldrich Killian here. We're going to be running into more standard uh, aim characters, although there will be other characters we're going to run into that are villains uh, in the base. You may wonder why John Cassiers did not voice Deadpool in uh, in Spider-Man: Shattered Dimensions, and that was because uh, he was voiced. Deadpool himself was voiced by Nolan North, who has become, through the Deadpool game and also certain other media, uh, sort of the official voice of Deadpool, which is why it was sort of personally disappointing for me um, when the most recent episode, or one of the most recent episodes of The Ultimate Spider-Man came out, and they actually had Deadpool in that episode, and he wasn't voiced by Nolan North, he was voiced instead by Will Friedel, uh, who I know best is the voice of Bumblebee from the end of the Transformers Prime series. Um, you know, it's... It's not that Friedel did a bad job, it's just that, you know, it wasn't Nolan North. And I think that you know, Nolan North's voice has become somewhat iconic um, for that role. I mean, you know, he reprised it in Lego Marvel Super Heroes. And so if it's not Ryan Reynolds, it just seems like Deadpool should be Nolan North. Team, I just had a thought. The section you're in contains the primary drive train. You could disable it. Mega base will be forced to switch to the secondary drive. Not much, but it give you more time to reach the top of the base. All right, so now we're going to uh, what we're in inside of the Omega base is basically a mobile research and defense facility for Shield. And since the enemies have taken it over um, and are threatening to run it for you know, basically threatening to run into a dam and hurt lots of people. We are going to have to destroy some of the moving parts in the engines uh, to sort of slow the base down so it doesn't move as fast, giving us more time to shut it down. We still also have to keep Dugan in, in good shape. You can see he's lost about maybe a quarter or a fifth of his health at this point. Um, and unlike the rest of us, or unlike Deadpool, he uh, doesn't necessarily have healing factor. At this early level, Deadpool really doesn't have his gun moves available to him, so we'll be sticking to his sword moves. But we can still teleport, as you saw us, uh, you know, as we did right there. Now, from what I understand, you can use the teleport ability of Deadpool to go through locked doors and sort of skip through things if you uh, if you're so inclined. I'm personally one of these guys who sort of likes to get all, every experience point they can, so therefore kill uh, a bunch of enemies. Just making sure I didn't miss anything. You see that little X on the screen? It's following Dugan. Curse that infernal doom. I can't do anything from this control room. Not to worry, there's a control room just ahead. Hopefully Doom left it alone. Get me there, we should be fine. But it took me a little while to realize that that's what was going on. 
you can see a lot of stuff is destructible, but not everything will grant you um, points. You're best off looking for crates like these in the left-hand corner here, or barrels, just like on the helicarrier. Uh, and that'll be pretty much true most of the time. Okay, we found our first simulator disc, and it is the Captain America one. That unlocks uh, Captain America's comic book mission, where Captain America can take on uh, some enemies by himself and a boss at the end of his level. And you can do those levels to gain experience, gain money, um, and also unlock the last costume for every character. Every character who's not DLC, and that is. So Colossus and Moon Knight well, Colossus has his fourth costume already unlocked. Moon Knight doesn't have a fourth costume. Right? Um, and some of the costumes get kind of weird. Uh, for instance, there's a Beta Ray Bill costume for Thor, which I think is pretty cool, but, you know, it's not, it's not really Thor. There's also a couple, there's a War Machine costume for Iron Man. Again, you're not really being Iron Man at that point, but, you know, whatever. So, here you can see, yeah, the crates giving us the, uh, the money. Now, what I will use money for mostly in this playthrough, uh, if it hasn't been obvious already, and I doubt it has because we don't have a lot of money at this point, is I will be using it to buy costume upgrades of all my preferred costumes. The shield soldiers are no match for my battle suit. It is wise that you fear me, for with my recent upgrades, I could crush you till you are destined to lose, for I will not let you stop the Omega base. Very well. Then come, comrade. Let us battle. All right. First mini boss here. This is the Crimson Dynamo. He is an Iron Man villain. Uh, he's essentially the Russian version of Iron Man. A lot of his backstory was adapted and used for the villain Whiplash in Iron Man 2. So if it's uh, helpful to you, you might want to just consider him uh, Whiplash without the. Well, I'll just consider him what Whiplash looked like at the end of the second Iron Man movie with his big suit. Okay, looks like he's dropped Hawkeye's cord for us. Um, just running around the other way to make sure there wasn't anything that we missed here. There's some neat, uh, but, you know, looking at Deadpool again, there's some neat aspects to Deadpool's character. One of the things I did like that they did in that Ultimate Spider-Man episode was the villain that, um, even though technically the villain of the episode was Deadpool, as you find out later on, uh, they did use the Taskmaster, and it's always neat to uh, pair up Deadpool and the Taskmaster, because the Taskmaster's power is that he can simply he can essentially adapt to anyone's fighting style, you know, copy it and defeat it. Well done, um, team. Except now, for one person, let's see about Deadpool. This beam and blast it. You know, he can't figure out what down. Deadpool's except style is. It's too unpredictable. Correct. To reach the top deck and stop the Omega base from so there. we delivered uh, Dum Dum over to this Sounds area, like but it doesn't look like uh, doesn't look like our job's going to be done here. So we'll stop here and we'll continue through the Omega base next time.